let me recall that <coughs> so <coughs> some basic uh, what we have done for direct products is that i am just talking about for two groups so for two groups suppose one is h another one is k so <coughs> then you can talk about the direct product of these two groups h and k so the most natural construction of a group which contains which contains the copies of h and k as subgroups right so the most natural construction of a group which contains the copies of h and k as subgroups is the direct product h cross k right that is one may think that h cross k a group which has been generated by subgroups that are isomorphic to h and k so that is h cross k we thought of a group generated by subgroups that are isomorphic to h and k right if you have any two groups you can always construct their direct product okay so the most common important characteristic of the notion of direct product is that some groups not initially be constructed as direct products might be decomposed into a direct product of smaller groups in view of which one may be able to think of the notion of direct product as factorization of the group right so you can think of this notion as factorization of group now let us come to our new notion which is semi direct product so here we need to include that uh okay before uh, coming to this uh, notion let me recall the characterization theorem which can be treated as recognizing the direct products right so you can so what you have done for direct product is that uh suppose uh i can so suppose uh h and k be two groups two subgroups i'm sorry of a group g then uh of a group g such that you may have these three properties of these two groups subgroups of g which is one is g can be written as 
every element of the group can be written as product of an element of h and an element of k that is okay secondly this two groups are will have the only common element which is the identity element and thirdly every element of h commutes with every element of k and if these three conditions hold then you can say that then one can talk about the map which is suppose phi from h cross k because you have h and k be two groups in its own right so you can talk about their direct product as well as you can set up a map phi from h cross k to g in view of this equation okay so then the map defined by phi of h k equals to h k is going to be an isomorphism Okay, that is, G will be isomorphic to H cross K. Okay, <coughs> okay. fine <coughs> now in this h cross k so note consider the group h cross k and here you can talk about two maps one is from h to h cross k which is h goes to h e right and another one is k to h cross k which is k goes to e comma k right and with respect to this map one may be able to say that is h is isomorphic to its copy right so you can talk about the copy of h in h cross k as h cross e and similarly for k as e cross k okay Now, uh, it is true that H cross K is abelian if and only if H and K both are abelian, right? This is true. You can check. Okay. So H cross K is abelian if and only if H and K both are abelian. 
so we would like to introduce so our motive is to introduce a notion which is known as semi direct product <coughs> okay which is known as semi direct product in which one may include so in which one may include something like this that it may be non abelian even if h and k both are abelian okay secondly there exist several maybe you may come across some examples or you will see that there exist several non isomorphic semi direct products using the same two groups okay so you can construct several non isomorphic semi direct products using the same two group but in the case of direct product you will only have one option right if you have h and k then you can only talk about this h cross k okay now recall that recall that uh the operation that has been that has been defined on h cross k the operation that has been defined on h cross k is what is the operation that is suppose you take two elements right and this is your h dash k k dash right so the composition is component wise okay now if you look at this operation closely you will see that i can write down this expression in this way that is h phi k h dash k k dash okay where phi k is the identity automorphism okay that means you are talking about so that is this provokes us to think of a map phi from k to this one defined by phi of k goes to suppose phi k and in that case which is only the identity automorphism okay that means every k will go to identity or more okay now why i am looking at this operation in this way is that if you look at the uh, condition 3 then you will see that uh, so look at condition 3 
okay so here you have written that h k equal to k h that means every element of h commutes with every element of k now whenever you are living in h cross k these elements will be mapped to so h1 h e e k right equal to e k h e okay if and only if what does it say <coughs> uh so look at this one what is this this is h1 so that means it is uh so h h and uh, phi e at e comma e k right and here what is this this is e phi k h comma k dot e if and only if so this is h and this is k but here it is phi k h and this is k and as per your condition 3 it is true for all h belongs to this for all k belongs to k and this implies this phi k h is actually h for all h belongs to capital h that means phi k is the identity automorphism right so this condition 3 is equivalent to saying that this phi k is identity h that means you are talking about the map trivial map this phi is actually a homomorphism right here it is trivial so but we are looking for some non trivial homomorphism which will give rise to semi direct products okay <coughs> okay now uh, before uh, defining okay so let me define okay the semi direct product now so okay so semi direct product Okay, so uh, I think uh, I I would like to uh, mm, do some examples first. Okay. okay mm. let uh, okay so let h and k be two subgroups of a group g now before assuming that h and k one of h and k are normal subgroups you cannot say that hk will be a subgroup right so 
so note that if one of at least one of h or k h and k i'm sorry at least at least one of h and k be normal in g then you can talk about the subgroup h k right of g okay so without loss of generality you may assume that so assume that h is normal in g then you can talk of h k <coughs> okay now okay now observe that observe that uh, if you take any element any two element of h and any two element of k that is suppose h h dust k k dust and form the element h k h dust k dust right then this can be written as h k now this by associativity so this is h dust and now you can put a k inverse here and put the parenthesis then it is k k dust now if you look at this element this belongs to h right and obviously this is in k so therefore so h k h dash k dash belongs to capital h k again if you think of the inverse then what is that this is k inverse h inverse okay and in that case this can be written as again it is k inverse h inverse k k inverse right so therefore it is again in h k okay <coughs> okay now it should be noted that noted that whenever you are talking about direct products in h cross k it is true that uh the h and k are kernels of the homomorphism right of the homomorphisms h to h e and k to e k right which implies that h and k both are eventually normal subgroups in h cross k right as a copy of h and k okay now if you look at this expression you will see that uh that is now what is this element what does it say so you are conjugating the elements of h by the elements of k right that means 
so this uh, so the element k uh, what is that yes k is dashed k inverse this gives rise to the map phi suffix k from k to this one by means of the rule which is phi k of h dash i am sorry phi k goes to phi sub x k where phi k of h dash is k h dash k inverse for all h dash belongs to h now you can check that this phi k is a is an automorphism of h that is phi k from h to h by means of h dash goes to k h dash k inverse is an automorphism. So, the inner automorphism. Ah, 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 ah. Sorry, I am inverse over. I am sorry. This is inverse. Okay, sir. So, this is an uh, automorphism of h. Okay. so if you assume that h is normal then you can talk of a non trivial automorphism by conjugation right so 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 k the group k acts on h by conjugation right which is eventually be an automorphism automorphism on h okay <coughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now let us define Let us define uh, uh, the semi direct product of two groups H and K by means of by means of a homomorphism phi from k to the group of automorphisms of h so let phi colon k to automorphism group of h be a homomorphism right that means for each k you are having a having an automorphism on h okay and as you all know that uh, so that means that is for each k 
फोन में डिफाइन एन ऑटोमोटोजन फाइव के लॉन्ग स्टोरेज ओके Now since phi is a homomorphism, so that means, so so observe that, observe that for any two elements of K, for any two elements of K, observe that for K K dash belongs to capital K. So here phi K compose phi K dash. It might be equal to phi k k dash, right? And certainly, phi suffix the identity. It goes to the identity automorphism of H. Okay. And what is the inverse of phi k? So it must be. Phi of inverse. Okay. Okay. This may be checked on your own. Okay. So now, so with respect to this homomorphism phi, <coughs> the now. The semi-direct product which will be denoted by H semi-direct product of K with respect to phi will be defined as follows. Okay. So now we are going to think of an operation that will be defined on the set H cross K. Okay, I am talking about the set only. That is the Cartesian product of H and K. Okay, so consider the set. Okay, H cross K. That is the Cartesian product of H and K. Okay, that means this is H K, but H belongs to capital H, K belongs to capital K. Okay. Now you would like to define a binary operation on this set. So define an operation on H cross K. In this way, just by using the homomorphism phi. That is, suppose you take two elements H K and H dash K dash. This will be mapped. This will be the element. The resulting element will be H phi suffix K of H dash, and here you will have K K dash. Okay, so just look at the situation which has been emerged out in the case of direct product. But in that case, these five cases are all identity automorphism. Okay, now we are talking about a general situation which is like this. Okay. So H K H dash K dash equal to H phi K H dash comma K K dash. So now your task is to check whether this operation will be a group operation. Okay. <coughs> okay. So let us check. Uh, So 
let us check whether it would give you a group operation okay so number 1 so you need to check the associativity So that means HK H dash K dash. Sir, I am going to say that the HK is the automatical application of the launch control. Yes, yes, tell me. I am going to say that the HK is the automatical application of the launch control. I am going to say that the HK is the automatical application of the launch control. Your direct product will be a particular one. Whenever you are talking about direct product, then that would be the for each k it will give you the identity automatically. That is a particular case, but I am looking for the general situation. Just take any file. Okay. So age double dust, k double dust. Then what is that? I think you can check this on your own. Uh, so this will be page dash, five k dash, page double dash, k dash, k double dash, right? Okay. And now it is H. 5k of this element that is h dash is double dash and this is k k dash k double dash okay So now E comma E, right? Oh. E comma E. And what is the inverse? And for any HK belongs to this let us let H dash K dash be an element of H cos k such that h k h dash k dash must be the identity element that is h phi k h dash k k dash falls to this now from the second component so this implies k k dash must be e that is k dash is k inverse okay and from the first component so h phi k h dash equal to identity implies so it is uh, so phi k h dash is H inverse that is phi k. So since phi k is an automorphism, so it is a bijection. So it just is phi k inverse H inverse, right? So that means phi k inverse H whole inverse. 
Am I correct? So therefore, so therefore, h dash k dash t is phi k inverse h inverse k inverse, and this is the inverse of h k. Okay. <coughs> So now, uh, okay. So now let us have a look at some examples. Uh, So remark is that a semi direct product will be a direct product provided. Provided the homomorphism phi is the trivial one, okay. Okay, that means the group K acts on H trivially. Okay. Now let us have a look at some examples. Now, example. Suppose consider the group of all matrices of this form, where x belongs to R star and Y is a real number. We may write it denoted by AFF over R. Okay. So these are called uh, the set of all affine matrices. Okay. <coughs> and note that. Note that if you take any two elements from G, so this will be x x dash x y dash plus y, right? Zero one. And uh, the identity matrix one zero zero one is the identity of this group. Now let H has been considered to be equal to the set of all matrices 1 y 0 1 where y varies over all real numbers and eventually this is isomorphic to R right. As you can define a map from R to H by y goes to 1 y 0 1. And another set x zero zero one is also a subgroup, and x runs over the all set of all non-zero real numbers. And this is again isomorphic to R star dot, right? C is R plus. Okay. 
Now note that, observe that x y 0 1 it can be expressed in this form that is 1 y 0 1 x 0 0 1. Okay. So, that means, so this implies the group G is the product of H and K, where it is true that H intersection K will be intersected at the identity element, identity matrix. Right. Now, if you if you look at any to general elements of H and K, then you will see that suppose you take uh, 1 y 0 1 belongs to H and x 0 0 1 belongs to K and Okay. Yeah. Where x y where y not equal to one. Okay. Then 1 y 0 1 x 0 0 1 equals to x y 0 1 and if you take the reverse one. So, this is x x y 0 1. Okay. Now, since y no y is not equal to 1. So, So, these two are, so there are elements of H and K which do not commute with each other, right. And x not equal to one. I am going to x not equal to y. X not equal to one. Oh, oh I am sorry. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, do not commute with each other. Now, observe that <coughs> observe that uh, that uh, G is I think non abelian, right? Why? G is non abelian. I can take on right? But H and K both are abelian. Dago to have a Check kore. Alishat hai isomorphic to. 
एविलियन का उस एक तो आर एक तो चार स्टार हाँ कितने एविलियन जी एविलियन so therefore this r and this g so this g is not isomorphic with with this one okay then <coughs> so this is not isomorphic with the direct product as it does not uh, satisfy the condition 3 right this one and also you have seen that g is abelian but uh, g is non abelian but h and k both are abelian now uh, look at the operation in the group r semi direct product pi r star okay or what is phi where phi from phi is a map from r star to automorphism group of r plus defined by phi of x goes to phi sub x x where phi x from r to r such that phi x of y equals to x y okay sir bolo sir bol chi ei je phi x ta man nichhi ei phi x ta jodi change kore di tokhon amar alada kichu pao to হ্যাঁ মানে তুমি তো উইথ রেসপেক্ট টু ফাই নিচ্ছ মানে তোমার গ্রুপ অপারেশনটা চেঞ্জ হয়ে যাবে ওই জন্য প্রথমে আমি বলেছি দেখো তুমি দুটো গ্রুপ নিয়ে কিন্তু देयर আর সেভারাল হ্যাঁ মানে কোন সাথে আর পাওয়া যায় তাহলে সবটাই অটোমোবিজম উপর ডিপেন্ড করে আছে একদম ডিরেক্ট প্রোডাক্টও একটা অটোমোবিজম উপর ডিপেন্ড করে আছে অবশ্যই তাই না হ্যাঁ এটা ট্রিভিয়াল এক্স অর বিটা এ then uh so check that phi x belongs to this one okay. so now uh look at the operation in the semi direct product r cross r star so for a for any two element uh, suppose take any two element a b a dash b dash belongs to this one we have so a b a dash b dash equals to so by the definition so it is a plus phi b a dash right and is b b dash okay so that means it is a plus so what is phi b a dash so by means of this uh, this map so it is b a dash right 
be the best. Now, if you look at the operation in the group of affine matrices, so you have seen that x y 0 1 x dash y dash 0 1 it is actually this one. Okay. So, these two operations resembles with each other. Okay. So, that means, so, so define a map psi from R same direct product R star to the set of all affine matrices by psi of A B goes to B A 0 1. Okay. Then hopefully this psi turns out to be isomorphism from R semi direct product R star onto this one. So, hence this is isomorphic to the semi direct product of this R cross R star. Okay. <coughs> okay. Now, example two. Example two, okay. Mm. Yeah, let let us consider the general linear group of order two. G that is G L two R and suppose we consider two subgroups one is h which is the special linear uh, group sl dr and another one is k which is isomorphic to r star dot that is x 0 0 1 x belongs to r star the isomorphic to r star dot okay you may be uh, refer to this group as the group of units in the ring r plus dot okay <coughs> okay now let let us take any matrix from the GL to R and then its determinant must be non zero. Suppose we denote it by delta, right? And with respect to this delta, so since it is non zero, consider the matrix delta 0, 0, 1. So, I think this is a matrix in the subgroup K, right? Having determinant, suppose let us take this as okay, having determinant 
build that okay note that a can be written as a now since it is non singular so you can think of its inverse so it is delta 001 inverse dot delta 001 now you need to check that this matrix is of determinant 1 okay so suppose it is uh, small h and this is your k so where the small h is a delta 0 0 1 inverse having determinant 1 that is this h belongs to capital h that is sl to r and your k belongs to capital k so therefore therefore your gl to r is actually the product of h and k where this h intersection k will be intersected at the identity matrix okay now note that <coughs> now note that if you look at this group this one if you look at this group gl to r then <coughs> we see that now note that uh, one can talk of infinitely many reflections of any line in R2 passing through the origin, right? And every reflection is of order which are of order 2, right? If you think of any line and if you if you can define a reflection then that would be of order 2 right just look at the reflection uh, uh, in the x axis right so if you take any point then it will move to this one and then go back to this one that is x goes to x okay okay so gl to r that is this group has infinitely many actually uncountably many reflections of order 2 every reflection is a linear operator linear map okay from r2 to r2 so infinitely many reflections of order 2 but restrict yourself to sl to r you will get only one element of order 2 okay so but in sl to r there exist exactly one element of order 2 namely which one minus i2 right and also in the case of also in r star you can also have 
exactly one element of order 2 namely which one minus 1 right so now if you want to take the direct product of sl2 r and r star then in the direct product sl2 r cross r star there exist exactly three elements of order 2 namely namely minus i2 comma 1 <coughs> i2 comma minus 1 and minus i2 comma minus 1 right so the direct product sl2r cross r star will have exactly three elements of order 2 but in gl2r you will have infinitely many elements of order 2 and this says that gl 2 r will not be isomorphic to the direct product of this one then what will happen <coughs> then can you think of this one uh, for some uh, for some homomorphism phi from r star to this for which gl to r is isomorphic to okay so I, I should stop here.